Kun Farid, I think we can start now. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, and participants, distinguished guests. Um, welcome to the um, European Chamber of Commerce in Thailand's um, session this afternoon and how we make IP protection easier for business in Thailand. And the European Chamber of Commerce in Thailand represents um, organizations, both large and small, and specifically um, for small, medium enterprises and business business, big businesses alike. Um, for any market that we enter around the world, one of the things that we want to know is that um, our intellectual property is protected, our trademarks, our copyrights, our patents. Um, and specifically, as we try to encourage businesses and more businesses here in Thailand to operate um, and to drive the economic growth of Thailand, they need to understand and they need to be rest assured that they will receive the right intellectual property protections. So it's great today to hear that we're gonna discuss on three main topics around the importance of IPR protection in Thailand and the current frameworks and the future frameworks and legislation that that's hopefully will be in place. And um, also hearing how Thailand is enforcing IPR as well um, to combat counterfeiting both online and offline. Um, and then also the commercialization of um, IP assets in Thailand, and that's how that's going. I'd like to thank our external guests who will participate and will take you through a, a great um, session today. Um, specifically, um, uh, Kun Sirapat uh, Vajrapai, the Director of International Affairs at the Office in the Department of Intellectual Property. I'd like to welcome and thank Ms. Uh, Patsason, uh, Kita Pongpan, um, the acting head of Intellectual Property Enforcement Unit as well at the Divisions of Customs Department. Mr. Sonbun um, Etisarun, um, the IP SME help desk and the external expert uh, to the King Gibbons, who I think will join the panel discussion. And one of our own members um, from L'Oreal, um, Ms. Vetani um, Raj Brakul, who will participate in the discussion over counterfeit, and also our external guest, who will also participate in the panel discussion today, um, Mr. Uh, Tanamatis um, Aryavat um, from the Cassicorn um, X. So I hope you have a great session. Um, and I would like to hand over to Frank Fougere, who is the European Association of Business Chambers. Um, expert um, on and leads the IPR working group on behalf of the chamber. It was wonderful speaking to you. Have a wonderful day. And now we'll pass over to Frank. Frank, have a great meeting. Over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And good afternoon, ladies and, and gentlemen. So my name is uh, Frank Fougere. I'm the uh, director of Ananda Intellectual Property and chairman of uh, EABC IPR. Uh, working group. Um, I will be moderating today's panel discussion on how to make IPR protection easier for business in Thailand. Um, this webinar is brought to the Southeast Asia IP SME Help Desk and the EABC, the European Chamber of Commerce Thailand. Please allow me to say a few words about the EABC uh, while my colleague Kun Sambon will present you the IP SME Help Desk later on. The uh, European Chamber of Commerce Thailand, e EABC, was set up in uh, 2011. Uh, it is um, a trade association with the goal to enhance trade and investment in Thailand and to strengthen business cooperation between Europe, including the uh, uh, European Union countries, but also the uh, European Free Trade Agreement countries, uh, the FTA countries, and the UK. Um, and of course, uh, in partnership with, with Thailand. As you can see uh, on the screen, I hope uh, my presentation is coming up, yes. Uh, as you can see, um, the EABC uh, is led by uh, various sectoral and cross-sectoral uh, working groups. This is uh, uh, really the core uh, of uh, the EABC. And one example of a cross-sectoral uh, working group is precisely the intellectual property uh, working group. Uh, once a year, the uh, EABC publishes um, a position paper, uh, which you can download using the QR code that you see uh, on the screen. Um, our latest edition 
uh, this year was in uh, uh, January uh, 2022. And as we wrote in, in this position paper, uh, we um, uh, typically focus on uh, three important pillars for a sound IP protection regime. Uh, the, first, the first pillar is that for there to be a strong IP protection regime, then it's to be a proper IP protection uh, framework so that tie, so, sorry, so that intellectual property right owners can register the IP rights in a quick, easy, and cost efficient uh, manner. Then there needs to be a second pillar, which is the enforcement, so as to ensure consumer protection. When enforcement is weak, it undermines the benefit of IP uh, protection. And last but not least, the condition should also be right for allowing IP owners to commercialize the IP assets. So today we'll go through uh, these three pillars with our panelists and please let me introduce them. So uh, first of all, we have uh, Kun Sirapat. Kun Sirapat is the uh, Director of International Affairs Office at the Department of Intellectual Property of Thailand. Uh, you will hear me probably talk about DIP. DIP stands for Department of Intellectual Property. Um, second, we have uh, Kun Patson. Kun Patson is the acting head of the IPR enforcement unit at the Customs Department. Um, we'll have a lot of questions for you today, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, Kun, Kun Patson. Um, next is my colleague, Kun uh, Sambun from uh, Tileke & Gibbets. Kun Sambun is, is a partner with the, with the firm and is also an IP SME uh, external expert. And he will tell us a little bit about how the IP SME at desk can help, uh, in particular, European SMEs. One of our members, um, Kun uh, Vatini, who's the legal director of uh, L'Oréal Thailand and will share experience on IP protection and enforcement uh, for L'Oréal uh, brands and patents. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Kun Tanar Mates, or I will call you Kun Paul since you have a, an easier nickname. Uh, Kun Paul is the venture director of uh, Cassicon X and he will uh, talk about uh, new forms of IP uh, uh, rights in particular in the digital uh, era. Without uh, further ado, I um, would like to uh, mention to the participants today that they can ask uh, questions using the chat box. Uh, we will be able uh, to accommodate some of these questions um, as the discussion progresses. And if we are not able to address this question uh, right away, we'll try to come back to this question at the end of the panel. Uh, discussion. So um, without further ado, I would like to uh, start by asking our first uh, panelist, Kunti Apart from the uh, Department of Intellectual Property to tell us about the uh, uh, current and future or upcoming uh, IP protection framework in Thailand. What do IP owners need to know uh, and in particular, what do SMEs need to be aware of when it comes to protecting their intellectual property rights in Thailand? Kunsiripa, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Frank, and uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, very much for inviting the DIP to speak in this panel, uh, along with other distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, I, I am very sorry, but we have the construction going on in our office, so the noise might be in the background, might be a little bit annoying, but uh, I will do my best to, to present to you uh, what we are doing in the DAP Thailand. Uh, first of all, Thailand sees the intellectual property as the most effective tool to drive the economy forward and to move Thailand out of the middle income trap. And we have done a lot in the past years and until this uh, very moment to improve the country's uh, intellectual properties ecosystem. Uh, at the policy level, um, I believe that you might be familiar with the National Committee on Intellectual Property Policy. Uh, we have 
the National Committee on Intellectual Property Policy, which is an integrity, uh, inter interagency committee chaired by the Prime Minister. The committee provides the policy direction and oversee the implementations of Thailand's policy on intellectual property since uh, 2016. It adopted the 20 years IT roadmap in order to guide the development of the country's intellectual property ecosystem. The roadmap consists of six areas, namely the IT creations, IT protections, IT commercialization, IT enforcement, and uh, two other things which are the geographical indications or GIs and the uh, traditional knowledge and the uh, TRTK and TCE, uh, which is the genetic resources, traditional knowledge and traditional cultural expressions. On the IT protection, uh, the DAP oversees and administers the protections of all types of the main intellectual properties in Thailand, uh, including the trademark, patent, design, copyright, and geographical indications. Uh, anyway, it, it also has the plant variety, which is the one type of intellectual property, but that thing is belongs to the uh, other ministry, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture. So we, we are not uh, actually oversee that, that uh, particular intellectual property issues. Uh, on the IP registration, which is one of our core functions, uh, our aim is to deliver the timely and high quality services to that so that the IPR owners can obtain protection quickly and effectively. Uh, for the trademark, we have introduced uh, during the past two years, a fast track option for trademark registration and renewal in Thailand. Uh, the fast track for trademark registration has reduced the registration time frame from 18 months to only six months and the renewal fast track has reduced the, the time frame for the re renewal of the trademark from 60 days uh, to only 30 minutes, which is uh, fairly quick. Uh, as for the patent, we have recently uh, introduced the, the patent fast tracks as well, uh, starting with a pilot project. Uh, in some specific field of important technology first. Uh, this project just started uh, only last year. And uh, with regard to the treaty membership, Thailand is a party to the, to the Patent Cooperation Treaty, the PCT, and the Madrid Protocol of the WIPO Intellectual, Pro the WIPO, which is the World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, that means that the patent and trademark applicants in Thailand can use the international system to file a single international patent or trademark applications in multiple jurisdictions around the world through DIP. Uh, just last, uh, actually there is the major development in the IP regime in Thailand. Just last week on the 13th of July, uh, Thailand has become the 113th members of the WCT, uh, which deals with the protections of copyright work and rights of authors and creators in the digital environment. Uh, the treaty will be enforced for us in three months from now, uh, which would be on the 13th of October this year. This demonstrates Thailand's commitment to strengthening the copyright system and ensure that the system keeps pace with the technological change and development that is growing uh, nowadays, including the online creative communities. Uh, I would like to touch upon a little bit on the other legislative development, uh, which is also the big part of, of your questions, I believe. Uh, first of all, uh, earlier this year, 
we have uh, set out to undertake the amendment of the Copyright Act. Uh, we divided the, the, the amendment into two phases. The first phase has already been completed uh, earlier this year, and it uh, has already uh, announced in the government gazette uh, and will come into force on the 23rd of August uh, this year, which is next month. In addition to enabling Thailand to exceed to the WCT, which we did uh, submit our instrument to Bible just last week, the new Copyright Act covered the amendment of the provision regarding the service provider's liability. Uh, for example, the notice and takedown measures to protect the protect to protect the uh, work on the internet. Uh, we also strengthened the protections of the TPM, uh, the technological protection measures, uh, and also we adjust the time of the protections of the uh, work the photographic works to uh, be in line with the requirements of the WCT. Uh, since the first phase of the amendment to the Copyright Act has already been completed, we are now uh, moving forward to, with, to, the, to the second phase, uh, which will deal with the amendment on the neighboring right and uh, to prepare Thailand to exceed to the WPPT treaties of white folks. Uh, at this point, uh, the DAP is now working on the draft amendment on this second phase. Uh, on the Patent Act, the DAP is uh, currently in the process of amending, amending the Patent Act uh, to streamline the registration process of patent and industrial designs as well as to prepare ourselves to accede to the Hague Agreement and to ensure that the process of registering the patent in Thailand is more quickly, more effectively, and with high qualities. Uh, for the status of the draft amendment to the Patent Act, uh, we have already proposed it to the cabinet already. And, uh, after the cabinet uh, gives its approval, the draft will be forwarded to the uh, Office of the Council of State for technical examinations. Uh, and then it will be sent back to the cabinet for approval once again before going forward to the parliament for the uh, considerations. Uh, we, we expect all the process would be finalize and be going in a pace that is not prolonged and that uh, we will be able to, uh, to, to enact this amendment to the patent act as uh, quickly as possible. So uh, I believe those are the current uh, situations pertaining to the intellectual property situations in Thailand. And uh, I think I will stop here this now and then uh, if you have anything i may add to that in, in uh, afterwards thank you very much thank you very much Kunsiripat, for this uh, very detailed um introduction and indeed we can see uh, a lot of progress being made uh, recently yes. and we look forward to see uh, uh, developments on on the patent act uh, as you just mentioned um i would like now to uh, uh ask uh, my colleague uh Kun Sambun, uh, Kun Sambun, you are both the uh, IPSME uh, expert, but you are also a, a Thai intellectual property lawyer. So you, you care for clients who have uh, you know, protection needs for IP rights in, in Thailand. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, in, in, in very practical way, uh, what type of recommendations uh, can you make for IP owners uh, who want to protect their IP rights in Thailand, are there some, some specificities in Thailand that they should be aware about or, or some areas maybe where, where you see some, some improvement? And last but not least, how can the IPSME help desk help these uh, applicants? All right, thank you very much, good Frank, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, 
thank you for inviting me to this seminar. Um, and as you said, I'm, I am a lawyer by profession, but don't worry, I understand that the majority of our audience today uh, are from the business side, so I'm not going to use any legal jargons today, don't worry about that. And, and thank you very much uh, to Kun Sirapat too, because uh, with your introduction, you helped me a lot in, in explaining about what should um, the European SME as well as the general stakeholders in uh, to, get to gain benefits on IPR protections in Thailand. Um, so I think the theme, the common theme would be no before you go, because um, in, in a lot of sense, even though intellectual property has been pretty um, common and, and, and harmonized in many areas, there are still a lot of ways that, that uh, typically design and typically apply to Thailand. And on that front, I would like to mention two things. First, I would recommend that you try, you try to capitalize in, in the uh, international agreements that Thailand is a party in, um, which Thailand, as Kun Siarpat has um, introduced, has been um, a member to many of the conventions. Uh, for patents, we are a member to PCT. Uh, for design, I think Hague agreement might be coming up uh, relatively soon. Uh, for trademark, we are also a member to Madrid Protocol. And uh, for um, copyright, we also, the latest one would be the, the BUCT that could um, Sigurdpart has just mentioned. So um, you, would, you, you would know that a lot of European countries are, are also member to these old um, conventions. So you will be able to capitalize on these um, benefits as well. But at the same time, I would suggest that you try to capitalize based on the uniqueness of the Thai um, legal systems, for example, in the, in the patent front, uh, if your invention relates to life science or public health, um, again, um, Kun Sirapat helped me a lot because he already introduced that um, the DAP has introduced fast track for a target patents, which um, would, you will be able to get a grant uh, within 12 months, which is, believe me, relatively, relatively fast um, as compared to some other type of invention. Um, and it's going to be six months in the case of petty patents. So again, this is a very noble thing. Uh, and, and it has started just only June the 1st, if I remember it correctly. Uh, for Madrid Protocol, um, even though there are some, some precautions that, that you probably might have to take into consideration, but um, in Thailand, um, if, you, if you designate um, Thailand as part of your uh, IR international registrations. You you need to make sure that uh, while you you would like to try to expand into Thailand, but there might be some alternatives of uh, the national route as well. If you would like to capitalize on fast track system, and for fast track system, um, if you um, choose the list of goods in the way that it will be in accordance with the pre-approved list of the DIP, then your application will get the first office action within six months, which again is very, very fast. And based on my own experience, in some cases, you can get it done within four months. So in the case where um, you already launched your products in Europe, for example, and then you got um, a target customers here in Thailand, or potential local partners in, in Thailand, and you need to be here first, I think that you, you, you probably need to capitalize on, on, on this particular uh, fast track system. And also uh, fast track system would also apply with the trademark renewals. Um, if you want to do trademark renewals, believe it or not, you can get, um, you can complete it within one day. Um, so that's, that will be another um, uniqueness of the local system that you can also apply. For. Um, and on, on the front of um, the Southeast Asia IP SME help desk, um, like I said, the common theme would be no before you go. And on that, on that note, I would like Kun Frank, if you could show that. The, um, the slide, I, I have a very few slides uh, um, to introduce you to our IP SME help desk. First of all, it's free. Every services of the help desk is free, including a, a webinar like this. So what, what we are providing to um, the SMEs, uh, for example, inquiry helpline. 
um, the helpline would be a very, a very unique system where you can send um, all your inquiries and there will be the help desk expert as well as the external help desk expert uh, like myself and Kun Frank, uh, who will be uh, glad to answer any questions that you have specifically to your business. We are also conducting webinars and e-learning modules, um, which you can find it in on our website. Um, another part where I, I would like to really, really uh, encourage everyone to look into it is the guide and fact sheet. Um, we not only have a country fact sheet, including Thailand, where we would be um, detailing all the requirements, all the um, important point that you should be noting before you coming to Thailand or some other countries in our Southeast Asia. But we also have an industry specific guide where, for example, if you are from automotive industries, there, would, uh, there might be something that you should be looking at, which is different from people who are in cosmetics um, industries. So uh, we also have developed that, those type of guides as well. And another, and we also have some thematic um, guide as well, where, for example, if you want to understand how the administrative um, actions is being carried out in Southeast Asia, that's also a, a way for you to really gain the knowledge. So um, these, are, uh, these are the social media um, platforms where you can also find all the information um, like uh, for the one that I said. And I understand that after this uh, event, um, this particular um, sessions will also be broadcast on YouTube um, among others. Um, so again, know before you go, please make sure that you will be informed before you actually um, starting and strategizing your, your IP strategies here in, in Thailand as well as in, in, in this region. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kun Sambon, and for also for presenting the the help desk and, and the fast track procedure. It is one of the uh, uh, very common uh, comment of IP owners in Thailand, you know, that registration takes a long time, uh, 18 months uh, for trademark protection and many, many years, sometimes more than 10 years for some patent uh, registration. So these this recent developments are, are very welcome and uh, we, do, we do hope to see with these changes and, and fast track procedures, the uh, overall, the speed uh, of grant of these IP rights being accelerated. I would like now to uh, uh, turn the microphone to uh, uh, Kun Vatini from uh, L'Oréal. Kun Vatini is a legal director. Uh, everybody knows uh, uh, L'Oréal, the world's uh, uh, most famous uh, cosmetic brand. Um, and interestingly, you know, uh, uh, L'Oréal has not only needs of uh, trademark protection, but also uh, uh, it's a company that uh, uh, makes a lot of innovation and therefore uh, uh, patents. Uh, so Kun Vatini, I would like to ask you, uh, um, from your experience as legal director of L'Oréal Thailand, how has it been for you to protect your intellectual property rights and, and, and your business? And, and what... Uh, what type of recommendations or, or issues you are confronted when it comes to IP protection? Thank you very much, thanks. Yes, uh, L'Oreal have a lot of the trademark registration in Thailand. Surprisingly, patent is not registered in Thailand, but we have a lot of the innovation for sure, otherwise, you know, we cannot gain the commercialization of this uh, product. Um, what I would give the, the comment is about the general perception of the IP in Thailand system. For my 25 year experience in dealing this IP, I would have said that Thailand has significantly improved in terms of the IPR registration, IPR enforcement, a shorter time frame for the registration, which is surprised me a lot, is significantly reduced time frame for the registration, which sometimes somehow it was frustrated for the IP owner. However, I'd like to comment a little bit about the pity pattern. We don't have the pity pattern. We are very general entrepreneur 
who just sell the product. However, to a certain extent, uh, the PT pattern registration was exercised by the owner for the, um, I would say, unfair trade practice. Just for the non-lawyer person, the PT pattern registration was designed to allow the owner to register that non inventive product with the shorter period at a lower cost. Hence, it doesn't require the substantial examination of the invention. And because of this less complexity for the registration, low quality pattern that somehow maybe from other people eyes, it could be called it as generic and such product was accepted. This will allow them to, use, to utilize their IPR in order to prevent other people to enter into the market and also is prevent other from you know, um, um, joining the market in the competitive way, undermine the patent protection system as well as perhaps cause the uh, economic loss so I was wondering whether um, the DIP uh, would have somehow revisited the, uh, the patent law to perhaps uh, include the new inventive step definition in the nef definition of the invention level and also allow anyone, not just only the interested party, to object the registration at any time, not only um, within one year from the registration has granted. This is my general perception. Thank you very much, Kun Vatini, for also for sharing this uh, interesting issue that you have. Uh, IPR uh, owners often complain that there, it's too difficult for them to register the right. But the point that you have raised is that, uh, in fact, some applicants are using the petty patent system and are obtaining registration uh, for uh, very generic uh, inventions that are that are not inventive and that they are abusing maybe uh, the IP system by trying to enforce or enforcing their their petty patents that have been granted a little bit too easily. Um, so I, I I think for this uh, maybe uh, um, I I would let Kun Siripat if you would like to comment on, on this on the spot very shortly because we do have a lot of questions and, and speakers uh, to hear. But if you would like to just give a, a short answer. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, according to the petty patent, I believe that the concept of the petty patent is to ensure that uh, inventor who, who invent something that is uh, not qualified as a patent uh, would get their invention protected. Uh, this invention may not have the inventive step, which is something that might require the, the excessive uh, knowledge or uh, uh, knowledge or technical applications or something like that. So that is why we go with the activity pattern. Uh, anyway, I believe that even though we, we if I understand, uh, Correctly, uh, I do believe that even though we provide this option for the applicant, uh, if it is misused, it uh, can be objected by uh, the interested parties uh, within the time frame provided by law. Or even after that, if anyone would think that uh, their right or the invention should not have been protected, it can also or to the court to request for the re removal or uh, to, to invalidate the protections of the PT patent as well. And that has no time frame. So that is one of the way to get care of it. Thank you very much <coughs> for your answers. I, I do agree that there are ways uh, but they sometimes are very slow and very expensive. Uh, you know, when you have to, when you have applicants abusing the system and you need to go after, you know, dozens or sometimes hundreds 
of uh, design patents or petty patents, you know, uh, that pr would prevent you otherwise from, from doing a business. So I think it's a question of, uh, yes, unfair, um, unfair practice. Um, I would like now to uh, uh, ask our last panelist, uh, Kun Paul from Casticorn X, uh, to cover an area that we haven't talked yet about, which is uh, um, about the uh, copyright protection. So Kun Paul, uh, you are dealing with uh, 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 digital uh, and uh, uh, work with the blockchain, with NFTs. Uh, could you please tell us uh, what does Cassicorn X does, how it works with the DIP, and how uh, uh, SMEs, uh, startup companies, which I understand are, are really the core of, of your uh, clients, so to speak, uh, how can they benefit from the uh, uh, protection work here in Thailand? Yes, please. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I'm Paul. Casicon uh, X or KX is subsidiary of one of the largest banks in Thailand called K Bank and also KSBTG. So our mission is how to build ecosystem in the in uh, digital world, decentralized economies. Uh, the reason why we do that is we see that uh, a lot of things, a lot of services and products that we see in a digital world right now, it's basically in some kind of database uh, or ledger-based economies. But we see that a lot of stuff going to move into the token-based economies. So that means a lot of stuff will be tokenized and then going to be transported uh, across multiple networks across the world. So basically, we are looking at like uh, how to how to build like, digital economies at scales, and we can actually put asset inside the digital world. And it's so important for us to really uh, not only have the technology stacks that will be able to enable all of this, but we need to make sure that we have the, the uh, protections for anyone that going into these economies as well. So therefore, for us, we built a platform called Coral. Uh, it is a NFT marketplace. And for, for us, this is the marketplace that sell digital arts that never uh, before possible because of the uh, <clears throat> because of the lack of technology that can track uh, you know the digital files and etc. So we use that and we use the blockchain technologies to enable the marketplace itself. And then in conjunction with the collaboration with the DIP, so we can now incorporate copyright uh, into the platform. And that means we can track the artworks and we can also uh, protect um, the, the artists that uh, live on the platform as well. So please allow me to elaborate a little, uh, elaborate a little bit on the NFT marketplace. Um, <clears throat> I, I would like to share the screen over here if it's possible. Okay, so uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, so this is Coral basically. Um, and Coral, this is an NFT marketplace that I'm, uh, I mentioned. And uh, it has more than uh, 150 artists, uh, including national artists in Thailand, professional artists from all walks of life, from, so, uh, from many disciplines. And the reason why they are here is because Coral, very different from other, uh, other marketplace in multiple things. The first one is, is the marketplace that protect identities of uh, artists. And then the second one is we use fiat uh, currency to purchase NFTs. And then the third thing is we really focus on the offline relationship. So, and when you look at art market, it's a global market. <clears throat> then if we don't actually, if we only protect identities of the artists by validating identity, it's not actually enough. So we, do, we need to make sure that the arts that artists sell uh, on the platform actually being protected uh, by, with uh, copyright, uh, copyright laws and, and, and et cetera as well. So, and the platform here, uh, Coral, we sell arts that range from about 700 euros to about 100,000 euros. So it's considered uh, one of the, the top uh, uh, NFT marketplace uh, based in Thailand. And this is basically the arts that we sell. <clears throat> and the collaboration that we work with DIP is very crucial for our success in, um, in promoting uh, artists across, um, you know, not only in the country, but also internationally as well. So for example, in these arts, uh, this is the price 1.85 million baht. 
uh, whenever people come and see artwork that already registered uh, uh, copyright with the IP, what we show right on the platform, we show uh, this badge, the pink badge over here with the tick, and it's written here, see inform to the IP. This is to really inform the buyers that this uh, artwork already registered with the IP. And for us, it's very important because it's the first time that we can actually tell the artist that if there's anything that you want to know about copyright, if you want to uh, have any issues about copyright, there's always a huge team from the IP to help them to tackle all of this across the world. And this is for us is really critical. Thank you very much. Kun Paul for uh, presenting this interesting uh, uh, new features and, and, and new topic. I'm sure there will be a question in the chat to be addressed uh, shortly. Um, I would like now to move on to the uh, second part of this uh, panel discussion uh, related on enforcement. Uh, since we are a little bit behind schedule already, uh, I would like to kindly ask the speaker to uh, not speak over two minutes so that we can have a uh, you know, a, a good discussion. Um, first question, I think, to, uh, to you, uh, Kun Siripat, uh, and, and then to, uh, to Kun Pakson. So first, Kun Siripat, could you tell us what are the latest developments when it comes to uh, uh, enforcement, uh, in particular uh, regarding online enforcement, and what is the DIP doing to help uh, uh, fighting counterfeit goods here in Thailand? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you can hear me, right? Uh, yes. Enforcement is uh, one of our top priority at the DIT Thailand, and we have been doing a lot in uh, various ways, both online and offline, to ensure that the enforcement in, in uh, Thailand meets the certain standards, uh, internationally and uh, national standards. Uh, nowadays, we, we witness that the pandemic has increased the popularities of the e-commerce uh, and others online activities. Uh, and as a result, the IT infringement has transitioned from the physical marketplace to the online platform. So uh, one of the way that we are trying to tackle these uh, challenges is that uh, we have moving forward to the voluntary measures as a uh, substitute to the, the uh, legal measures. The measures that I am talking about is the MOU on the protections of IPR on the internet, which provides a voluntary notice and takedown mechanism between the IP right holders and the online platforms. Uh, the signatories of this MOU includes the right owners, three major e-commerce platforms in Thailand, and all relevant government agencies. Uh, this FOU has been around for more than one year now, and uh, the, the feedback is quite good. And uh, it has been proved that by this FOU, the right owner can notify to directly to the platform, online platform, to take down the imprinting activities from their platform. Uh, the other things that we are initiating at this moment is the MOU to establish the mechanism for cooperation among the right owners and advertisers. Uh, the idea is to minimize the placement of advertising on the IPR infringing website or the applications and restrict the flows of revenue to some websites uh, so that the website, the, the infringing website would not have the money or capital to run their business. Uh, we have consulted with uh, this idea with uh, relevant stakeholders and hopefully uh, the process is now underway and hopefully we, we can conclude it and have it side in the very near future. Uh, moving to the, uh, that, that is, uh, I would like to talk about for the moment. I, I think uh, before I cover the challenge on the online uh, issues that you mentioned. Thank, thank you. you very much, okay. Sorry, Pat, and indeed, thank you for uh, mentioning about these two uh, MOUs uh, that are important, and, and we look forward to uh, uh, working with the DIP uh, on, on, on this uh, implementation of the second MOU for advertising uh, agencies. Oh. 
Um, I would like now to uh, uh, ask Kun uh, Patson, the acting head of the uh, IPR enforcement unit at the Royal Thai Customs, uh, to tell us about a very uh, recent development regarding the uh, protection of intellectual property rights at the border. Now, we have mentioned that, uh, especially since the pandemic, a lot of the trade of counterfeit goods has shifted online. Uh, but there is also another uh, development which is related to this online uh, marketplaces is that goods are now being shipped in smaller parcels, making it maybe more difficult for custom officers to intercept the counterfeit goods. Now, we know that uh, a lot of fake products available in Thailand are not manufactured in Thailand, but they are penetrating the Thai markets. So, Kun Paxon, could you tell us um, what are the latest developments and what is being done by the uh, Royal Thai Customs to improve uh, the uh, uh, control of infringing products coming into Thailand as well as goods in transit? Thank you. So... Thank you, Queen Frank. And first, since our progress of the uh, custom notification is quite in the spotlight now, so I would like to start with updating the floor with uh, our latest process. Uh, right now, the draft of the custom notification is currently during the final recall review and expect to be announced soon. And after I give some revision about uh, the background of the uh, notification, I will answer you about a small puzzle as well, since this is mentioned. So I would like to start with the two things that is changed in this new notification. This is are the power of the custom officer. Uh, right now we, we manage to uh, draft that the custom officer have the ex officio power. And also more than that, we have the Thai custom IPR recordation system because um, according to the new notification of the Ministry of Commerce, of course, uh, the right owner and the agent is no longer need to go for a trademark protection uh, at crossing border point registration at the DIP, but then they will come to the custom for uh, uh, another registration process. So uh, by this new regulation, the right owner or the agent are eligible to submit the application to our recordation system. And also you can still choose to file the request form to the custom from time to time uh, in order to detain the suspect shipments and with the reasonable ground, of course, the custom therefore has uh, the authorized power to uh, detain such goods for inspection. And since the recordation is the new thing that has been emerged in this new uh, notification, so it needs uh, the reliable and useful IPR goods ID uh, identification data, which I mean by this that we also really need the support from the private sector in order to you know, uh, provide us some information in that system. And of course, uh, the system is now designed and we are almost finished by, by the process of the system. And I can assure you that it's quite um, safe and very you know, uh, user friendly. And by that, we also link uh, with the DIP for the database. And also we have uh, the protection of the data by the DGA or the digital government agency as well. And I would like, since we have quite a uh, short of time, I would like to skip to Kun Frank uh, question about the prevention of the small parcels. In, uh, like we all know that the online purchasing uh, number is quite rocket this day. As I also mentioned in the earlier state that we also have the official power. And also this will really help custom in the enforcement at the border point since we have the power to detain and you know to uh, manage with the good that we, fight, uh, we face that they are like IPR infringing goods because earlier from uh, the last notification, we also need to inform and need uh, the granted power from the IPR rights owner to, 
to grant us the power to manage with the good first. So this is very helpful in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Paxson. So just to make sure I understand, there is still the ex officio procedure. So even if some IP right owners will not record the IP rights with the new trademark and copyright custom database, the custom officers can still take action and will still take action ex officio uh, if they have suspicion that some goods are counterfeit and they can see that the trademark, for example, uh, is being registered with the DIP. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, good Frank. Uh, if that is uh, a reasonable ground, of course, it is the power of custom to detain and to, to suspect if there is some kind of IPI, IPI infringing good uh, coming into Thailand according to our uh, custom act. And moreover, I think it stayed very, very clear in the Ministry of Commerce notification that the IPI infringing goods is a kind of, you know, the goods that need to be blocked from the country. But in this case, as you all know that there are so many various kind of good in this in this world. So sometimes to identify or to tell that that good whether genuine or fake uh, need very expertise uh, background and also need some information that 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 may help custom. So to answer it uh, directly, I say that. Of course, yes, we can conduct that, but with the help of the information that will be very useful in terms of the enforcement for custom. Thank you very much, Kun Patson. Maybe Thank one you. last question. You mentioned that this, uh, this is a very timely topic. So are we uh, expecting the signature to take place next week? Uh, and if so, when will be the actual date of entry uh, into force of this new notification. So when will the, the new database system for recordations be available? Will it be a matter of a, a few weeks, a few months? Uh, I, I don't know if you can answer this question, but I, I, I know a lot of companies are eager to know when they should be ready for this change. Okay, thank you, Queen Frank. But this question is, is a very good question because I know that it quite relates to uh, the private sector. Uh, first, I have to say that this notification is right now under the revision of the legal, uh, and I think it's very, very, um, very close to the signing stage. And if the DG already signed, I will let you know slowly afterward. And for the recordation system, I, I have to say that it's almost 100% um, right now. And right now we are have to wait for the registration and signing process in order to you know to to bring the system out and then we will have kind of uh, uh, notify to the other private sector later. Oh, so, so you mean that the, the database system has already been built and is is ready to be switched on when the when the new notification comes into force. Is is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I would like now to uh, uh, go back to you, Kun Sambun. Uh, as an IP lawyer, obviously you uh, uh, must have a lot of clients uh, facing some uh, issues with IP infringement. Could you tell us just very quickly, uh, you know, give us some really practical tips about how to best enforce the IP rights in, in Thailand in two minutes, if possible. Sure, um, I will use my two minutes um, wisely. So um, on, on online uh, inf infringement right now, I think um, takedown has always been the, the best uh, solutions for uh, IP uh, holders. Um, takedown, when, when I say takedown, I mean, um, you, you can also use the mechanisms provided by each of the platforms to inform them about um, the alert um, infringement. And especially, but you, you need to make sure that you are going to have the copies of certificate of registrations uh, for verifications. Um, so that would be on online um, enforcement. I still rec uh, strongly recommending, recommending that. Um, for offline, believe it or not, even though Thailand has just uh, relaxed their 
um, the COVID restrictions just only recently, but uh, based on our experience, we we starting to see more and more offline infringement, which has been quite um, drop uh, for the past two years, but it's coming back now. Anyway, um, so for offline in um, infringement, um, CND or um, cease and desist letter or notice, um, what, whatever you call it, uh, still I still be the best um, vehicles for um, IP holders to try to stop the infringement. Uh, but to that uh, to that end, we have also seen and, and, and experienced some of the situation where the clients has been sending um, the CND letter themselves and then the, they use strong words to the point where it could amount to the defamation case. So that, that would be a tricky part. So just make sure that you, you have, at least on this part, uh, consult with your counsel um, as to the, the languages before you 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 go go on. That would be um, the practical recommendation. And one last thing, I, I would like to recommend um, everybody to try to seek um, settlement by way of a mediation cent at, at mediation center at the DIP. The Department of Intellectual Properties in Thailand has um, for, for many, many years now, they have mediation centers whereby the officers of the um, DIP would sit as the mediators to mediate the case. Um, and last year, we also had a case where we used virtual meetings to set up the case uh, by way of mediation. So that would be a very, very useful tools for IBI holders to try to seek sediment to the case as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Sambon. Kun Vatini from L'Oreal is, how is it for, for a company like L'Oreal? You know, you, you're under a lot of uh, challenges, not just in Thailand, but you know, worldwide, and especially I assume from China. Uh, how does Thailand compare maybe to, to other Asian countries or Southeast Asian countries when it comes to to enforcement and what type of recommendations or, or areas do you see for, for improvement? Uh, we can always do better uh, because the fight is getting harder. Very, very difficult question for me to answer. <laughs> but um, um, I, I cannot come in other countries enforcement law perspective, but um, I saw the huge collaboration from the DIP custom uh, in terms of tracking down the, you know, counterfeits coming from outside of Thailand. But as a proprietor, we would try to hunt down who is the root cause, who is the counterfeit distributor, not only the seller. This is a challenge for us. Now, so they, uh, as Frank mentioned about, you know, counterfeit now came from the uh, intermediary like online marketplace and uh, social media. But uh, we would focus how to stop a huge number of the counterfeits coming from outside of Thailand. This is something that we still cannot find the solution because it's out of our hands, correct? But what I, first, what I see now, the counterfeiter have lived up their profile. Now they become the one-stop service. They smuggle the product from outside of Thailand. They also have warehousing. They also have logistics. Even go further, they even operate their own website to sell this counterfeit product. But the problem for the proprietor and the authority is that we cannot track them back. We cannot hunt them down because they falsify the bank account. They falsify the deliver address. That is a key issue. Regardless whether you know the government and the authority try to uh, create the tech down action, also collaboration in you know um, uh, preventing the counterfeit coming from outside of Thailand. But the, uh, in terms of the collaboration between custom and the DIP is something that a hurdle from proprietor because we need to know the upcoming shipment as well. But in reality, all the counterfeit is come from the outside of Thailand. For example, if they purchase from the um, marketplace, they will directly 
right? They will directly to the processor, which of course is out of our data. Here is the something that I would have less uh, to the forum or the IP, whether is there any IP enforcement tool available to deal with this issue? Thank you very much, Kun Batini, for sharing this, this experience, which I think is uh, not just a concern for L'Oreal, but for many, many uh, uh, different, different businesses. Um, one last question on the uh, topic of, in, of enforcement, and by all means, uh, Kun uh, on or Kun Siripat, if you would like to comment or, or, or go back on, on things that have been said, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Kun Paul, you, you work with uh, blockchain technology. How, how do you see this new technology of blockchain uh, being helpful to address the issue of, of counterfeit products? Uh, after all, the blockchain cannot be faked, right? Uh, yes, uh, this is a great question. So I think this is has to uh, com has to be a combination of what Kun Sambun mentioned just now. Uh, that, well, that's uh, the the key highlight, key things that he mentions about uh, the DIP's uh, efforts of like being the mediators and etc. When when bad case come up, and then and that's really critical. And then when we talk about copyright uh, or trackings of intellectual properties. Uh, we, there are two things here to inform and also to protect. So that's basically in the business uh, language that would be the, the two the book, uh, two, uh, two words here. For blockchain technology would help both. Uh, for uh, we like for example, the core platform uh, use the uh, the numbers that, that uh, the, the C in from the IP registration numbers that uh, artists register with the artist uh, with the IP. Uh, put that in the descriptions of the artwork. And then what we do is at, when we make that art piece uh, or digital art into NFTs, we actually put that numbers into the blockchain, which is, which is essentially we cannot really change that because uh, the way we put it, we put it into the public blockchain where there are more than 10,000 nodes and uh, it's just impossible to really change those data. So for counterfeit uh, goods, uh, there are even actually more complexity, uh, you know, into that because it's actually physical. Uh, in many cases, uh, when we uh, when we actually first started, uh, we looked at the, the case of like if we can actually um, you know track the physical goods using blockchain and etc. We found that it's the challenge is basically how are you going to be so sure for that you know the digitalized and the the tagging system or the detecting of that object itself. How can we so sure that it's still intact after the manufacturing of that uh, item? So, um, so we we see uh, the use of like multiple technologies like the QR code, uh, barcode, and also NFCs and those things to be embedded into physical goods. And then uh, you use those technology as an interface for, for for physical goods. So it would be able to help to identify the ID of that parcel, for example, or the or the or the, or, the, or that product itself. And then you use the technology, the blockchain technology, to really track that. Uh, and this is the, the the characteristic of blockchain, or the it's called provenance. And there are a few companies in the world actually providing that service to basically the the manufacturing, or the manufacturers or the originators of goods. Thank you very much, uh, Kun Paul, for for bringing this topic, which I think is to be continued. I know that there will be a lot of interest. On, on, on this uh, new fields and new hopes, you know, in, in the fight against counterfeit products. I uh, am starting to see a lot of questions on the, in, in the chat. So uh, since we are past the one hour mark, I think I will uh, skip the last part of our panel discussion on commercialization, you know, because it will take us too long. And I will uh, let the uh, uh, questions from the floor. Um, so uh, please uh, raise your hands when you would like to ask a question. and. There is one uh, uh, first participant, Kun uh, Ruton, uh, uh, from the uh, law firm uh, Domnian Somket Bunma, also a, a highly uh, uh, respected IP lawyer here in Thailand, who has a question, I believe, for Kun Patson. Uh, Kun Ruton, please uh, ask your question. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I have three questions for Kun Patson uh, from the customs department concerning the new notification 
that the customs department is going to uh, uh, enact soon. My first question is, under the new notification, uh, the response time that IP owners must uh, uh, respond to uh, uh, information from the customs department. For example, uh, when the customs department ceases a shipment and then notifies an IP owner to identify the goods as, as counterfeit, uh, uh, the, the response time is, as I understand it, three days. Uh, is this still the uh, response time that is going to be uh, uh, in the new notification? Three days. That's my first question. My second question is, when an IP owner uh, wants to record, uh, for example, a trademark with the customs department, how much detail of uh, uh, counterfeit goods must the IP owner uh, put in the application for recordo, recordo of, of the trademark? And my third question is, can the recordo of trademarks with the customs department be done online? Those are my three questions. Thank you very much, Kun Ruton. Kun Patson, are you able to answer these three questions from the floor? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Ruton and Kun Frank. And as I would like to answer it uh, question by question, uh, since we already have um, the meeting with the private sector, I think in, in, in February and Kun Ruton really, uh, really provided so many useful information from the private sector. And I would like to thank you about that. And on the first topic about the date, uh, I think we already mentioned the date since the last stuff is, is some kind of 24 hours or two, uh, two, uh, or two days which everyone said that is quite short. So in that meeting, we already uh, have gathered all the requests from the private sector that it should be extended to be three days. Of course, uh, Thai Custom already uh, used uh, that date mark uh, with the new notification. But moreover, we uh, receive uh, another useful information from the private sector that uh, in some case, uh, the the process to prove or to the identify the genuine of the goods may may takes more than three days. So in this case, we also have this exceptional cost. Uh, if you have some, you know, uh, a reasonable ground to believe so, you can like submit uh the, the form to that custom house or to the port to extend the date of. Uh, the response time to be not exceeding than 10 days, of course, according to the TRIPS agreement. And I hope this one is quite clear for you, Kundratan. And for the yes, second yes. question, uh, is it able to be, uh, I have to say that the system is very, very well uh, designed. Uh, more than submit the application online, we also have some kind of you know, OTP that can, you know, send back to you in order for assist you and make you more convenient with the registration into our new system. But uh, according to the Thai jurisdiction, of course, uh, for the first time of the recordation, after you done the online process, we also need you to come and see at um, face to face and submit the paper base time and after that if you would like to make some kind of you know a revision or change the name of the contactor or uh, do another slightly uh, adjust please feel free to do it online we already you know uh, build the system for that 
And for the last question, uh, oh, sorry, that is the third question. And for the second question, which I skipped, is it what kind of information that we need in order to, to fill in the form? Uh, I, I have to say that it is quite settled right now for the information and the application form, but of course it's, it might come after this with, with the sign notification. Uh, we have to say that this is not quite fake because of course we respect that some information is quite you know classified for for the private sector we we, we respect that but uh, in order to help with uh, the work of the custom enforcement uh, we will example of the genuine goods and the fake goods if you have or any specific part of the good that can you know help us to identify this one is the genuine one some kind like that or if you have some kind of tips up that may help us like uh, if this is the real stuff, this might made from this factory only, or this might use this um, chipping line only. This is also helpful for custom in this case. But for the other information, I think it's quite normal and very similar to the registration with the DIP. And I think uh, after the signing process is done, we will, you know, get in touch with you and try to you know, provide you more explanation about the, the registration process. Don't worry about that. For the question, Kun uh, may, may I ask one follow-up question? Just one short question. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, if, if the customs department uh, uh, has the process of having a representative of uh, the IP owners come to the customs department's office to look at the, the seized goods. Uh, why, why do you need to have the details of the goods in the application for record of, of trademarks, for example? Since, since we are going to have to go to see the goods anyway, uh, uh, why do we need to describe the goods in, in the record of, of trademarks? Uh, can you give me like half an hour to answer? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Kunrutan, I would like uh, to, this is quite an interesting um, question. Uh, go back to that meeting again. We have uh, accept uh, the offer from the private sector that uh, if there is any detained cases or any, you know, seizure cases at, 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 at the port or the custom house, uh, whether it is possible for the custom to, to inform uh, the rights owner or the, the representative in this case. And after that meeting, we, we, we accept that uh, principle and put in our notification that if that can't happen, of course, we will inform you. But this um, inform process is not for you uh, to, to like identify the goods. If the custom can really tell that that goods it's uh, you know it's fake uh, back to back to the principle of we try to make it more convenient and more good for you know border enforcement so of course we add on the ex officio uh, power in this case so it does mean that uh, we we use that uh, that mark for for identify it must come first with that if custom have reasonable ground to identify, they can do it because they are some kind of ex officio. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that we, we, we don't respect your rights uh, to identify your own goods, but it means like I already answered to Gun Frank because right now we have, you know, various kind of purchasing or um, transaction in this world 
we have more small parcel to to manage and in this case it's very hard for us if we have you know to to someone uh every representative every time uh we we, we found something that is clearly fake I, i'm not sure whether i can answer it quite clear for you in this case kun ruchan please feel free to you know contact me or or discuss this further in detail if you would like to Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Kun, Kun Patson and Kun Roton, for um, this discussion. Very, very enlightening. Obviously, there will be a need for future events and awareness uh, events to, to make sure IP owners really understand about this, this new rule. Um, to close the topic of the uh, uh, custom enforcement, I have a, one follow up question for you, uh, Kun, Kun Patson. Um, you just mentioned that uh, based on the information provided by the trademark owners, the customs will be able to identify counterfeit goods, uh, meaning they, they, they will know based on the information provided for sure that these products are counterfeit. In this case, I would like to know two things. The first thing is, will you notify the representative of the IP owner that you have found counterfeit products, even if you are sure that these are counterfeit products, are you still notifying the uh, uh, IP owners? Because you know they would like to know, uh, um, uh, even if you are sure that these are counterfeit products, they need that for statistic purpose. And also sometimes they like to see the counterfeit goods, they like to inspect them. So that's my first question. And the second one is, in case you are not informing them or calling them to inspect the goods, um, how is the liability of the representative or the IP owner for anything that could happen to goods that would be seized, uh, but in fact found to be not counterfeit goods, if you understand what I mean? So there's a, one question about whether you inform the IP uh, uh, representative and another one regarding the liability of the IP representative. Um, first, I have to say that, of course, for a request, it's already stated in the notification that we, we will uh, notify the rights owner or the agent, and also we will notify the importer and exporter about the case as well. So this is quite clear. And about uh, the second question, uh, we have to say that as you may know, there are so many class of counterfeit goods, some Louis Vuitton that is fake. You can you know, tell it by the C because Louis Vuitton doesn't have that uh, product. This is quite easy in case that maybe because some you know, can exercise to detain and to tell that goods it's fake. But in some case that maybe that good is very you know, detailed uh, and very hard to tell, of course, uh, we we also need you know the support from the private sector side to support uh, the information into the system, or maybe in the case that we are not quite sure whether this one is fake or not. Of course, we we won't do some kind of you know seizure. We will you know try to contact you if we need further information. So this is why the 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 uh, custom recordation. Uh, this is quite important this, in this time because if you submit the form so we can you know, have the address and the contact to, to contact you in this case. And I think this is quite general, Kun, Kun Frank, because you know, this recordation system is very worldwide, but in Thailand, we just you know, uh, use this as our new uh, notification. Thank you very much, Kun Baktana. I'm afraid there is one more question for you uh, uh, because of the, the, the topic being very, very uh, timely. Um, the question comes from uh, Kun Chet on our chat box. Uh, Kun Chet is asking whether there would be a linkage between the existing database of the DIP, the trademark database of registered trademark, and the new uh, custom database to verify the accuracy or minimize discrepancy between the two databases. Um, so if you could um, answer this, this, this question. Uh, can I have a further clarification? What, what, what is the existing database of the DIP? 
I, I think the, the question is, uh, uh, oh, actually, uh, Kunsiripat is raising his hand. So I think, Kunsiripat, maybe you can answer that question. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I do believe that Kunshet means the database that uh, already exists in our office uh, because uh, in the previous time that uh, once the right owners want to notify their right to be uh, enforced at the border, they have to come to us, uh, which is now shipped to the notifi notification to be done at the Department of Custom, Custom Department. Uh, at this point, uh, what I can say is that uh, since we are at the beginning of the beginning stage of this uh, new process, uh, once all the process is put in place, uh, there will be the linkage between the already existing database exist in the DIP and the custom department for sure. Thank you very much. Yes, this is really important because trademark are registered in the name of uh, the applicant, but usually there is a local uh, representative or trademark lawyer that takes care in particular for foreign applicants. Uh, and, and that person may not be the same person as the person who will investigate the products um, with the custom. So indeed there could be some, <laughs> some risk of conflict or, or, or some issues, uh, but um, we'll not go into the detail uh, further today because that, 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 that will take us too long. Um, so I would like now to uh, um, um, make, uh, ask the, the, the panelists maybe to uh, uh, make their final remarks or, or concluding remarks. Uh, I see in the chat box that uh, Kun Kren Wan also asked questions regarding the protection of original media works. Uh, so if any of the speaker could uh, uh, tell us about the uh, protection of original media works, I believe it would relate to copyright uh, uh, protection. Um, and if there is any uh, other last minute questions to our panelists, please can you raise your hand or ask it in the chat box? Yes, Kunpar, you raised your hand. Yeah, maybe I can add on that one. So because okay. it's uh, uh, artworks also consider original uh, media work in the digital world uh, and for us, um, how to share the case measurements for protection on the original media work. So this is for us, we've been thinking so much uh, on how, if you want to build this global platform, how can they actually protect the artist? Um, so I, I would say um, working with DIP, um, it has been one of the amazing experience uh, because DIP has a lot of uh, team members that can advise uh, the artist on this one and also have the uh, mediator teams uh, that Kun Sambun mentions early on. Uh, and that become extremely useful. Um, you know, as I always um, mention this, as we, we have weapons and we have shield uh, and, and we equip this to for artists to, to go out to the world. And it's still not very perfect, I would say, um, even though we, we have to have a combinations of um, working with the IP, the copyright side, um, we, we need to make sure that we have the blockchain technology to really support that, to, to maintain and, and attract all that thing. And at the same time, um, legal side of things is so important as well. Uh, so it, so that means when like people sign up for Coral, their term of services, uh, privacy notice and user agreement and et cetera. So, so to make all this really work. So uh, the, I would like to share it and this, uh, this way that it has to be a combination of things uh, to make sure that uh, we have, um, a, a, I would say, good enough uh, for, uh, for us to really help artists or creative uh, people to really publish the work. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, if there is any last minute questions, maybe among our panelists or from the floor, I can leave one minute before concluding. Um, if not, um, may I may I uh, suggest not suggest but request for some uh, cons consideration or deliberations at the DIP on one thing uh, from the.
perspective of SME, especially European SME, I understand that franchise is um, probably the, the, the solid base uh, for them, either franchise in the franchise out. And for franchise, it in a lot of ways would include a trademark um, license. And obviously to determine if the trademark license would be required to be recorded in Thailand or not is a very um, legal challenging issues. And also, uh, but so in, in, in a lot of cases, we would recommend doing the recordals um, just to make sure that the, the license agreement will not, and all franchise agreement will not be void. Um, and, that, and that's a very uh, severe consequence. Um, so on that note, I, I'm not sure, but uh, this will probably qualify another um, sessions, but I, I think if the DIP could make the recorders process for trademark license to be more lenient, it will be beneficial to all the stakeholders simply because we had a case where, for example, um, that the trademark license recorder was rejected because of the termination clause is too complicated, which it actually has to be complicated because the matter, the, 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 the issue or the subject is so complicated. So on that note, um, it would be great uh, for all the stakeholders if, 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 the, if this could be that more balanced. That would be the only uh, concluding remark that I would like to make. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can answer this question and I think after after you Kun Ruton uh, would like also to intervene. Yes, uh, thank you very much and thank you Busumbun, for, for your suggestion. Uh, yes, uh, the trademark license uh, according to our law need to be uh, registered at, at the DIP and uh, thank you for your suggestion uh, because uh, at this point the DIP Thailand is doing everywhere we can to, to ensure that we can facilitate the, not only the registrations of the, the intellectual property, but also the commercializations of intellectual properties in, the, in, in Thailand. So uh, I believe that this is a very interesting request and suggestion, which I will uh, forward it to our executive uh, to see whether we can facilitate anything and to ensure that uh, things would be uh, more smoother. Uh, that is my, my response to that. Uh, with with uh, regard to my final question, uh, final words on, on this, uh, I think, uh, like I said, the DAP Thailand is now trying to improve our service uh, in all aspects, uh, including the protection measures. Uh, we have been uh, legalized and amending our uh, new amendment to our existing law and uh, being a party to some new uh, uh, treaties uh, to ensure the seamless and more convenient protection. At the same time, on the enforcement of IPR, uh, we have been very proactive and we have had a very good cooperation with all uh, relevant agencies, including the uh, custom departments and other agencies to ensure that the IPR right in, in Thailand is well protected. At the same time, we are also working very hard on the commercialization of the digital property. We have been working with the Gascon X on uh, the Toro platform for the NFT. Uh, we are also working with the universities to ensure that intellectual properties right in Thailand is fully commercialized for the benefits of the right holders and the public. So uh, there is a lot more to, to be done and uh, we are on the process. And I would like to thank uh, everyone for, for the feedback and suggestion uh, given in this session. And uh, we will be very happy to working with you, including the feedback from the EABC as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, when final questions for today, and that will be you, Kun uh, uh, Rutan, and then we'll conclude because it's been uh, an hour and a half of very, very okay. high quality Sorry, I'll, presentations. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll make it quick. It, it's not really a question. I just want to support the view of Kun Sombun because I have experienced the same thing that Kun Sombun has, has experienced. And also, last point, I think uh, the DIP should even consider abolishing 
the requirement for recordation of license agreements altogether. Because I, you know, I think I, I've seen many cases of uh, license agreement recordal, and it's frankly quite useless. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Rutan. And that will uh, conclude our presentation today. I would like to thank all the panelists uh, for your time and very insightful presentations uh, today. Um, I, this event has been recorded, so it will be watched hundreds of times. And I'm sure it will be a lot of questions uh, to the uh, IPSME experts or to the lawyers who joined the call uh, today. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm also very uh, happy to see the uh, IP uh, community of Thailand. We had an old Thai uh, panel discussion uh, today, although we, we are providing this service for European SMEs. And a lot of the comments that are being made today, as you can see, are useful not just for uh, European SMEs, but for IP protection in, in general in Thailand. Uh, so thank you very much, everyone and uh, enjoy the rest of the day and the weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kaab. Thank you. 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 Thank you.